Jew and Aryan fared alike among the babies. They had not yet heard of the Nazi racial law. Meanwhile, Hitler's annexation of Austria had given great encouragement to Konrad Henlein's Sudeten German Party, the Sudeten Deutsche Partei, SDP. Closely allied to the German Nazis even then was the organization of that part of the Bohemian German minority which represented Herr Hitler's wedge into Czechoslovakia. At this time, they still pretended to be loyal citizens of the Czechoslovak Republic, to which their elected representatives had sworn allegiance. After the Anschluss victory, the propaganda of the Henlein party flourished exceedingly, protected by the political freedom ensured by the Czech constitution. Tons of Nazi propaganda, photographs, leaflets, signs and newspapers were brought in from Germany. Guns, too, which the young men were secretly trained to use. were waiting for the return of the local Nazi leader, Konrad Henlein, from his first visit to Hitler after the Anschluss. Henlein's return was an open demonstration of Nazi force in that part of Czechoslovakia, and an open declaration by his party that their real allegiance was to Adolf Hitler. German money was spent on the creation and agitation of wholly new sentiments among these citizens, especially among the young men. The sentiment of German races above all other races, the sentiment of German nationality to which these people had never belonged in the past. The young Nazis eagerly accepted a doctrine which enabled them to march, drill, and salute as superior beings consecrated by the Nazi mission. Henlein's mouth, of course, came the blood and race propaganda of his master, Adolf Hitler. And the German dictator, in speeches calculated to arouse his Nazi followers, openly supported the Henlein stormtroopers in their campaign against democratic Czechoslovakia. Despite all the talk about German blood and race and culture, the real objectives of these gentlemen were to be found in the wealth of southeastern Europe. The grain, 
meat, oil, and other resources of Romania, the Ukraine, and the whole Danube region, to which the road lay through Czechoslovakia. As Bismarck said, Bohemia is the key to Europe. Democratic Czechoslovakia, heavily fortified all around, protected by two solemn treaties of guarantee from France and one contingent treaty with Soviet Russia, barred the way to the Nazi advance. This great German dream of conquest was not new when Hitler began to realize it. Since Bismarck, the Drang nach Osten, the drive eastward, has been a vital part of the whole German imperial ambition, with the object of making German wealth and power so great in the east that in Western Europe too, they must prevail. The most popular comedians of Czechoslovakia were Voskovets and Beric of the Theatre Liberated in Prague. Voskovets and Beric had their own map of Europe. Ale 